Hello everyone, um, I'm Rachel from Tamar Grow Local and uh, we are based on the Devon Cornwall border. Um, our setting is rural but we also do a lot of work with the wider area, urban area around Plymouth and thought the introduction that Joe gave was really interesting um, and I'd just like to add in something to that if that's okay around the term that we seem to use a lot is food insecurity. Um, in our area there's a lot of self-employed people, um, there's, it's an area of very low wages um, and those kind of things we're finding are causing a lot of food insecurity, especially this year as a result of COVID, um, where work is much more um, insecure, especially for those groups. Um, but also, um, we're also seeing a lot of food insecurity where family breakdowns happen, where there's mental and physical health issues, um, rural services. Um, so that could be public transport, um, delays in receiving benefits, knowledge and skills and um, security of housing as well, which can all um, play a big part um, around accessibility to um, food and local food in, in particular. Um, we've been working around themes of food poverty and food insecurity for about the past five, six years now. Um, and that work has grown out of very close relationships that we have built with both um, local housing provider in Plymouth, Plymouth Community Homes and Plymouth City Council. Um, it's grown from building relationships with local schools, um, local, um, our local food producers and also um, networks in Plymouth as well, including Food Plymouth and um, they have created a food poverty network in Plymouth that we're part of. Um, I work with Plymouth City Council and um, Plymouth Community Homes. Um, we created a project um, called Grow Share Cook, um, which was a project in Plymouth in year one, looking at food insecurity, um, where we deliver out um, bags of vegetables um, every fortnight to, it was up to a hundred recipients at that Point. Um, it was a Plymouth City Council and Cities of Service project. It was very successful um, and it had a very high return on social invest, very high social return on the investment that was put into the project um, and had a very direct um, impact on people accessing local food as well as um, increasing knowledge around cooking um, and growing. And it was also supported with a um, project around energy saving, um, which is also a really important theme to run around alongside food um, because quite often the choice is heating or eating, um, which we're finding a lot, especially now we're going back into winter. Um, the COVID situation this year has really shown that food um, poverty and accessibility really is reaching all areas of the local community, um, rural and urban. So we found that our work is a lot more kind of coming into the rural areas this year than just Plymouth. Um, but what we're doing along with our partnerships that we've built um, and using OFN in particular is that we um, are using a pay it forward project for so people our customers can buy a veg bag for a family in need um, or just provide a donation um, and we've been distributing those bags this year through um, uh, the schools in Callington our local town where we've been um, during the school holidays creating fruit bags and veg bags. Um, we also deliver to the soup run in Plymouth and to the Salvation Army. Um, we've been continuing our Grow Share Cook project and we are about to start a project in Plymouth this Christmas um, called Plymouth Feeder Family at Christmas where we'll be supplying vegetables. Um, we, the, the vegetables that go into the bag we source as from our local producers as much as we can. Um, we don't ask them to discount their projects. It feels very important to us to tame our grow local that we're still supporting our local food producers as much as we can. And we're not asking them to discount their food for, for this means, but so it's, we're kind of 
trying to keep it holistic as possible that it supports everyone. Um, another couple of things we're doing, we also signed up to the Healthy Start vouchers, um, which is a national scheme. So we can accept them through OFN. So, um, and then we can claim back the, the money. Um, and that we haven't had a huge take up on that at the moment, but it's something we're going to be promoting further in um, 2021, because apparently in, in our local area, there hasn't been full take up of the available vouchers anyway. So we hope we can work with Cornwall Council on that. Um, another thing we do to try and keep the food hub as accessible as possible is that we run free collection points um, around the valley and also in Plymouth. Um, so customers can collect for free with no minimum order at all. And I think that's really important to be keeping um, our offering as accessible as possible um, and keeping those um, collection points inaccessible places. So they might be um, in a place where people gather, they might be at the end of a public transport route. Um, so just to kind of make sure that they can be accessible and at useful times to, to work out for people as, as best as possible. Um, we're not, we, we run our food hub on a zero waste system. So we don't, we often get asked if we have excess produce that we can pass on. Um, we don't have excess produce because everything is picked to order and brought into us. Um, but we do ask our producers if they do have anything different that's that's not through our um, delivery routes and they want to donate them, then we can help pass them into um, the places where we can uh, drop off to the Salvation Army or the soup runs. Um, and our, but we've been really pleased with how our customers have responded to the pay it forward veg bag and pay it forward donations. It's been really successful um, and it's enabled us to add value to projects that Plymouth Community Homes have brought to us or the local council have brought to us or the schools um, so we can really support them and, and make a difference. <laughs>